this is getting to be ridiculous. The fact that we're still talking about this five, six months, whatever it's been, since this story became a story, is just ridiculous. At this point, I don't even know what we're debating anymore. I don't even know why we're arguing about this. Okay, Dana White has an opinion. He believes John Jones is the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. He disagrees with the rankings. Okay, that's the story. Dana White disagrees with the rankings. This story has taken on a completely different life of its own, and it's become this whole big thing, and it's become a story about Dana White and his relationship with John Jones. This story is just ridiculous at this point. The fact that we have to listen to this every Dana White press conference, whether it's at a UFC event, a Dana White Contender Series event, a Power Slap event, all these different events and all these different podcasts, interviews Dana White does, every time this guy speaks, this topic comes up. And it's getting to be really, really annoying that we have to keep hearing this over and over again. Look, Dana White believes John Jones should be ranked number one in the pound-for-pound pound rankings. The people, the idiots, I, I should be more clear, the idiots who are voting for the pound-for-pound pound rankings and the UFC rankings don't see it that way. Okay, that's the story. There's a disagreement here. Dana White doesn't agree with the rankings. That's the story. End of story. We don't need to keep rehashing this over and over again. And the fact that reporters keep bringing this up over and over again, it's just completely gotten out of hand. It's completely ridiculous. And now we don't even know what we're arguing about anymore. Dana White is 100% right when he talks about John Jones. John Jones, without a doubt, is the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. That shouldn't even be debated. People are talking about activity. People are talking about, well, he's only fought once since 2020. But the fact remains the same. John Jones is the current UFC heavyweight champion. John Jones hasn't lost. I know he has one loss on his record, and that was a fight that should have been switched to a no contest. It's a DQ loss to Matt Hamill at the Ultimate Fighter 10 finale. We all remember it. We all know it. It's been done to death. So we all understand that John Jones is an undefeated fighter. He was champion at light heavyweight, vacated the title, took three years off, moved up in weight to fight at heavyweight, defeated Surreal Gan to claim the vacant UFC heavyweight championship after Francis Ngannou left the organization. We all know the story. The fact that we're even having to tell this story is complete stupidity. John Jones has never lost, and John Jones is the current title holder in the weight class that he fights in. I don't know what the debate is. John Jones, he's considered by many to be the greatest fighter of all time. A lot of people will say that he's the GOAT. So you have a guy who's the current champion in his weight class in the largest organization in the world, which is the UFC. So you have John Jones, the greatest fighter of all time, a guy who is the current champion in the UFC. What are we debating? Dana White is 100% correct. John Jones should be the pound-for-pound pound number one fighter in the world. Islam Makachev has done great things. He's on a great run. He's the champion in his weight class. He's doing great. Then you have Alex Pereira, who's currently ranked number two. John Jones is number three, for those who don't know. John Jones is currently ranked three in the pound-for-pound pound rankings. So Alex Pereira, he's the biggest star in the sport. He's doing great. He's the champion in the weight class he currently fights in. He's put on great performances, saved two events this year. He's a great fighter, and he's doing great things. Okay, but... As long as John Jones is around, as long as John Jones is in this sport as an active fighter, which he is an active fighter, had he not gotten injured for the Stipe fight, he would have fought Stipe. John Jones is still an active fighter. Okay, he's been out for a long time, but he's back now, and he defeated Surreal Gan, and he became the heavyweight champion. So you can't make the argument that he's not an active fighter. The guy got injured. The fight with Stipe would have happened a long time ago. So that 
whole little argument really doesn't make any sense. But again, go back to my original point. My original point was, as long as John Jones is in this sport, a guy who many people consider to be the best ever, as long as John Jones is an active fighter on the UFC's roster, he needs to be the number one pound for pound fighter. Dana White is 100% correct. I don't know why we keep debating this. People are talking about activity. People are talking about what have you done lately. People are talking about all that stuff. But in John Jones's last fight, he destroyed Surreal Gan. He took him down and submitted him easily. The facts are the facts. Surreal Gan gave Francis Ngannou everything he could handle. It came down to the final round. It was two rounds apiece going into that final round. Ngannou ended up winning the fight and retaining the belt. He left the organization, so they matched Jones up with Surreal Gan, the guy who just gave... Ngannou a great fight, and John Jones ran right through him. That's why John Jones needs to be at the top of the pound for pound rankings. Is he moved up a weight class and destroyed Surreal Gan, which is a point that Dana White has made over and over again. I keep going back to what I said earlier, where why are we even debating this? Dana White, there's things that he does and says that I don't agree with. There, there's there's things that. John Jones has done that I don't agree with. John Jones, in my opinion, is a great fighter, one of the greatest of all time. I can't really put him on my top GOAT list. John Jones, he I would give him two because I can't give him number one because I don't think he did it clean his entire career. I would put George St. Pierre number one and I'd put John Jones two. Also, I have problems with John Jones because He took three years off, and realistically, he could have just rolled out of bed and fought and defeated Surreal Gan. Like, John Jones could have weighed 207 pounds and fought against Surreal Gan and done exactly what he did. He didn't need to take three years off. So, I hold that against John Jones. Like, you could have fought all this time. You left a bunch of money on the table, and the result that you got in that fight after three years, you could have gotten taking no time off. You could have went from, you fought, I believe it was February of 2020 against Dominic Reyes. You could have went right from the Reyes fight into that Surreal Gone fight, maybe four or five months apart. Let's say, okay, you're fighting in July or August now, and completely destroyed Surreal Gan, and then we could have maybe got the Ngannou fight. Like, there's a lot of things that John Jones has done wrong. This taking time off is a strike against him. This thing about him continuously getting popped for picograms and all that nonsense, that's a strike against him. And then him getting in trouble with the law all the time is a strike against him. John Jones has wasted time. Like, there's a lot more that he could have done. Okay, great. Does it really matter the title defenses at light heavyweight? No, but Anthony Rumble Johnson and him should have fought, and Volkan Ozdemir should have fought. The guys that Daniel Cormier fought during his title reign should have all been John Jones fights. John Jones getting in trouble with the law or John Jones testing positive and all this stuff and opening the door for Daniel Cormier to have a run as the light heavyweight champion. That just doesn't sit well with me. John Jones basically wasted his time, our time, and he left a bunch of opportunities on the table. As great as he is, and he is one of the all-time greats and deserves to be the pound-for-pound king right now, as great as he is, he could be a lot greater. As wealthy as he is, he could have a lot more money. Everything that happened to Conor McGregor, blowing up, being the face of the sport, crossing over into boxing and getting a huge payday. Everything that Conor McGregor did, John Jones could have done. John Jones is 10 times, 20 times, 30 times a better fighter than Conor McGregor. It's just that he's got got some demons. He's a, a phony guy. He's got a lot of problems. So this is not me defending John Jones. Like Dana White said in one of his most recent press conferences, him and John Jones have had issues. The Chael Sonnen fight and the cancellation of UFC 151 is a massive strike against John Jones and will always be a massive strike against John Jones in the eyes of the UFC. The UFC front office will always remember that. They had to cancel a show because John Jones refused to fight Chael Sonnen. Think how ridiculous that sounds. Okay, Greg Jackson and that team that John Jones was working with at the time, they 
played a massive role in why he didn't take that fight. But John Jones should have just told them, shut up, I'm taking the fight. John Jones could have fought Chael Sonnen on 10 minutes notice and did what he did in the fight that eventually took place at UFC 159. Like, John Jones has a lot of problems, and he's got a lot of problems with a lot of people because he is such a talented guy, but in a lot of ways, as great as he is, and he'll go down as one of the all-time greats, and he was the champion, and this guy who reigned over the money division, which is what the UFC light heavyweight division was always referred to as, because all the greats, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, Randy Couture, Vitor Belfort, those guys were always champion in that weight class. The UFC light heavyweight division was always referred to as the money division. The division that built the sport, built this company, was light heavyweight, and John Jones was the guy who ruled over this division for the longest. So he'll always be remembered as an all-time great, but the unfortunate and sad part, and also impressive part in a way, is that he could be better. His legacy could be better. He could have more title defenses. He could have possibly been a double champ, could have held both belts at the same time. I know he'll go down as a double champ, but he could have did it like Daniel Cormier and held them simultaneously. Like The whole thing of John Jones' legacy, it's crazy because it's called into question, but at the same time, you can't question it. He's in a weird spot. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. I'm not defending John Jones. I'm just saying the truth here. I'm just saying facts. I'm not defending Dana White. I'm not, you know, when you're right, you're right. And Dana White is right. And John Jones should be ranked number one in the pound for pound rankings. I still don't know why we're talking about this. I still don't know why people continue to ask Dana these questions. I don't know why people continue to debate Dana on this. The debate is over. John Jones, as long as he's active in this sport, is the number one pound-for-pound fighter until he loses. If he goes in there and he gets slept by Stipe, okay, he's not going to be the number one pound-for-pound fighter in the world, and this debate is over. If he goes in there and he defeats Stipe, and then he moves on and fights Tom Aspinall, and Tom Aspinall puts him to sleep, okay, well, he's not going to be the number one pound-for-pound fighter. He's not going to be ranked number one. Okay, but as long as John Jones hasn't lost, is still the title holder in his weight class, as long as John Jones is an active fighter in this sport, fighting for the UFC, he has to be ranked number one. I don't understand why there's people in the media, there's fans, there's fighters, there's all these people who talk about this sport, are celebrating the people who push back on Dana White saying John Jones should be the number one pound-for-pound fighter in the world. There's people who are being celebrated because they disagree with Dana White disagreeing on who should be the number one pound-for-pound fighter in the world. It's just gotten to be so ridiculous at this point. I understand people don't want to see John Jones fight Stipe. And I understand why people say, well, Dana White saying all this stuff could be viewed as a way to justify John Jones and Stipe fighting. But regardless of what happens with Stipe. If Stipe and John Jones fight next, or Stipe doesn't make the fight and they have to replace him with Tom Aspinall and John Jones and Tom Aspinall are getting mashed up together, regardless of what's happening with John Jones' next fight, John Jones is still the number one pound for pound fighter. Like this rebellion against the UFC, this rebellion against Dana White and this pushback that Dana White's getting for disagreeing with the rankings, and being dissatisfied with the matchup between Stipe and Jones, how that has any relation is beyond me. Okay, you can agree and disagree at the same time. Two things can be right at the same time. Two things can be true at the same time. You can disagree with the Stipe and John Jones booking, but you can also agree with John Jones being the best pound-for-pound fighter in the world. You can be on both sides of the fence here. You don't have to be in lockstep with Dana White. Oh, well, I want to see John Jones fight Stipe, and I believe he's the best pound-for-pound fight in the world. Or, I don't want to see Stipe and Jones fight, and I don't think John Jones is the best pound-for-pound. Like, I don't understand what we're even debating here anymore. And I really don't understand why people are being celebrated for disagreeing with Dana White, disagreeing 
on the rankings. This whole thing makes absolutely no sense to me. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think? Sound off in the comment section below. Is John Jones the best pound for pound fighter in the world? Do you agree with Dana White? Do you disagree with Dana White? Hit me up in the comment section below and let me know what your thoughts are. Also, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.